All right, let's be honest. Things happen in Dungeons and Dragons that you as a dungeon master do not expect. And sometimes it can be really hard to deal with the unexpected. Sometimes we even deal with it by railroading. Even if we don't know we're railroading, sometimes we are railroading and that is definitely a bad thing. Dealing with the unexpected is something that a lot of dungeon masters are going to have to do eventually. So today we're going to be covering that. I'm going to be using an example that happened literally this very day I'm recording this in my game to illustrate how we as dungeon masters handle the unexpected, both good and bad. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so what happened? Well, we are on our second to last session and our party just had the climactic battle against the Midnight King, a gigantic ancient shadow blue dragon. It was an amazing fight, an hour and a half, but the dragon was still alive. The party were doing well, but a lot of spell slots were down. The dragon was still strong and it was regaining its breath attack. If it railed against the party with another huge breath attack and rolled high with low deck saves from the party, we were looking at a TPK. They needed to burst him down. And there was a lot of drama in this fight, a lot invested. And then our bard casts Prismatic Spray. And I completely forgot all the effects of the spell. I don't have it memorized. So when he was going through Prismatic Spray, the dragon rolled a one on its save and didn't have any legendary resistances left. The party celebrated and expected high damage because it's a seventh level spell. It should do something decent at least. What we didn't expect was for him to roll a seven and we didn't know the effect was teleporting the creature into another plane of existence. And as far as I know, there's no coming back. In that moment, the bard teleported the dragon into another plane of existence, and that was it. The fight was over. Now, there are two possible responses here. This completely happened out of nowhere. What was supposed to be a longer form battle, maybe even going on to the next session, was cut short by the teleportation. I could have looked at this as lame, stupid. I could have rejected this as a possibility and said that the dragon resists the ability for the bard to teleport him out. I could have just flubbed it and said, oh, he actually had another legendary resistance in his pocket. He actually doesn't get teleported out. Or, oh, he's immune to being teleported into another dimension. That actually doesn't work. But... I think that that kind of thing is really stupid. At this point, the party had been fighting the dragon for a while. The Midnight King's fight had gone on for a long time, and it was an epic battle involving true polymorph transformations into other dragons, summoning dragons to fight him, dragons popping in and out, the party unleashing massive firestorms, huge high damage attacks from our blood hunter, the entire works. Sure, the fight could have gone on for maybe 30 minutes, an hour, longer, maybe even to the next session, but instead it was cut here and I think that that is okay. It was a cool thematic moment. I said just teleported into another plane of existence, as if that's something lame or anticlimactic, but really that's epic. The bard used a high-level spell, dumped out of his sword. He described it as tearing a hole in reality and pulling the dragon into another plane of existence. That is amazing. That is cool. Since the dragon was basically getting killed in that moment, the party got a chance to do a sort of how do you want to do this moment, describing how each of their attacks dislodge the dragon's grip on this reality and push him through this portal into another plane. And I didn't know that prismatic ray is technically like a teleport sort of thing, but I imagine the ray opening up a portal for the dragon to get pushed through so that we can have this epic moment. That allowed for the whole party to collaborate, it allowed for the bard to work with the rest of the heroes, and got him another epic kill in our campaign, even though it wasn't really a kill, but you get my point. That was amazing. It was an opportunity created from something unexpected, and that is the way that we as DMs should handle unexpected things. Make the best of them. Especially if you can see a route where it creates a cool moment for the campaign. We as DMs 
need to be able to improvise at least to a degree. That is a huge part of the game. And it is important to not resist the players when they come up with something cool like that, because that's the entire point of playing D&D, is to come up with cool solutions to the problems that the DM puts in front of you. At the core of it, that's what Dungeons and Dragons often is. We present problems to the players, we present questions, and they present answers. The antithesis of this would be railroading, of course. Basically, expecting the players to do what you want, how you want it to be done. Now, often, players should do what their DM wants. Like, for example, if the DM is giving the adventurers the one ring of Sauron, the goal is to throw it into Mount Doom. That's the goal. The players need to do that because that's the whole point of the entire adventure that the DM made. It's kind of like in Curse of Strahd. The point of Curse of Strahd is to combat Strahd. If the players choose to never go to Barovia, then there's not much of a point to playing that adventure. That's the social contract made between a player and a DM. Of course, how they choose to do that is going to be different. Take Lord of the Rings as an example of this. The party can choose to go to Mordor in a variety of ways. There's an entire Middle Earth for them to choose. Now, of course, again, there's a social contract where players sort of communicate with the DM what they should be prepping, but you still get my point. There's a variety of ways to achieve the goal of destroying the One Ring, even if destroying the One Ring is the singular goal. We'll continue with this Lord of the Rings example for a while because I think it's a good one. The DM could expect the players to go over the mountain, to go through Moria, or take the eagles to a place, or something along those lines. But what if the players decide to do something unexpected, a route that the DM didn't anticipate? This is where a strategy I use comes into play. I usually offer those branching decisions where the players can choose to go to a specific place. I offer those at the end of sessions. That allows me to have time to prepare those places. I always do it at the end. There was one time where the players had a choice to either go to a city deeper in an empire or go to another country entirely. They're essentially choosing between two NPCs. It was a branching decision. I offered that at the end of the session because I needed time to prepare either city and a quest hook for each. I also typically do not have story arcs for particular places end in the middle of a session because, again, I need time to prepare whatever the players want to do next. Again, there is a social contract between players and DM. The players should probably tell the DM, hey, I kind of want to go onto the seas, so maybe prepare something for the high seas. I kind of want to go to this country. I want to catch up with this NPC so that the DM can prepare. Sometimes the unexpected is fun, but other times DMs need time to prep. So that kind of thing, the players should be telling you what's going on. And players out there, you should tell your DM what's going on if you want to make a big decision like that. But if there's an in the moment thing, like an unexpected spell cast, or the players deciding to talk it out with a character instead of fighting and killing them instantly, the DM should try to think in the moment of how to handle that. It's improv skills, and those are really hard to achieve. Gaining that kind of thing is difficult. It takes time and it takes practice. I know that that is the most annoying thing to hear. It takes practice. But that's truly the key to many things in life, including Dungeons and Dragons. Handling the unexpected things players will come up with does take practice. Coming up with a variety of solutions to the problems that sometimes the players are presenting, that does take time. And really time is the key to this. Not just time for practice, but time to make decisions. If the players throw something unexpected at you, try to put that position somewhere where you can come up with a solution over the course of the week. Again, at the end of a session is my best advice. But if something happens in the middle of a session, and I do think that that is rare, take a break. I ask for breaks with my players multiple times. It happens. Lunch break, coffee break, whatever. We sit down and we stop the session so that we can do something else for a while and I can think over what just happened. It does occur sometimes and that is okay as well. Now, of course, I doubt that huge unexpected decisions that are within the lines of reason will happen in the middle of sessions. It doesn't happen that often, at least in my experience, but again, if it does, those improv skills 
do come in handy. Those smaller unexpected moments like a spell cast, for example, like the one I gave earlier, those ones take a little bit of brain power to come up with a solution in the moment. And unfortunately, like I said, that does take practice. There's nothing more that I can say about this. I'm sorry this is a bit of a rambly video. I think that this is just a really important topic and it literally happened today, so I wanted to cover it. If you guys enjoyed this slightly less formal episode of Tabletop Tavern Tips, then please do hit that like button. If you want to see more content from me, then please do hit that subscribe button. And finally, if you do want to leave your own thoughts, then go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.